Hey everybody, what's going on? Helmite here from Grab the Lantern, bringing you another video today. Today we're going to be doing another grab bag podcast, because I do kind of like doing those, and I had a few smaller topics I wanted to talk about today, and instead of just doing one video, I figure, why not bundle them together and give you guys more Grab the Lantern for the price of one. Or for the price of none, as it may be. But either, either way, let's go ahead and get into it today. Our first topic is going to be Rylas Crystal Scepter nerfs. Now... The patch notes are not out yet as of this writing. However, we do know what Riot has proposed the nerfs be. And essentially, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but essentially they are, uh, Riot's Crystal Scepter is going to be losing ability power and is also going to be losing some slow value. So instead of uh, having scaling slows based on the type of spell that applies it, it will instead be a flat 20% no matter how it gets applied. This is going to be a slight buff for champions with area effect or do damage over time abilities, but a significant nerf to champions with single target spells such as Victor and Cassiopeia. Now, I think that the Rylize nerfs are going to be important for a couple of reasons. Number one is that Rylize is back to being, I guess, having an identity is what I should say. Beforehand, Rylize, for most of the season I should say, Rylize has been a really generalist item. Instead of sacrificing ability power for the ability to slow things, Rylai's was just kind of a universal get this item because you get a lot of ability power and it comes with slows, as opposed to something like Rabadon's Death Cap, Raw AP, Luden's Echo, Burst Damage, uh, Zonny's Hourglass, the active. Rylai's was just kind of a buy me automatically. Now, you are basically saying, I want the slow and I will get a little bit of damage to compensate, or you can prioritize something else and get a different stat or a different buff based on whatever you need. So I think overall the nerf is a, or the nerf is, is justified, and a lot of people are concerned about the fact that it's an item that's losing ability power. We've, we've had a lot of items lose AP over the last year or so, but I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. A lot of mages nowadays are the premier mid laners, Cassiopeia, Victor, Orianna. They're all really, really strong, and a kind of indirect nerf in the form of Rylai's nerfs would not be a miss, in my opinion. Number two is Yasuo. A lot of people have been making threads on the board saying, man, I hate playing against Yasuo. He's so annoying. He has so many broken parts of his kit. Oh my god, nerf, please, Riot, why? Uh, and I don't think that's necessarily a fair a fair uh, perspective to take because, yes, Yasuo is annoying. But he's also, he is high skill cap for one, so I am totally fine with Yasuo being good because he requires a lot of skill. If he was not high skill cap, I would have already won every game I play on Yasuo instead of feeding my ass off like a boosted monkey that I am. The second part is that, yes, Yasuo is annoying, but that's just by virtue of the things he does on his kit. Blitzcrank Hook is annoying, but that doesn't mean that Blitzcrank is broken. It just means that that one ability is really annoying. But it's supposed to be annoying. That's kind of what it does when it works properly. Windwall is an annoying ability. It has counterplay, and it's not as bullshit as people think it is. Yes, it should be able to block ultimates and projectiles and basically anything you care to name because that's the whole point of it existing. It's a long cooldown, it's easy to bait out, and the Yasuo player needs to be good on the draw. If the Yasuo successfully windwalls your ultimate, either you were not thinking you were not paying attention to Windwall's cooldown, or the Yasuo was really good and managed to block you. That that shouldn't be something to say nerf this. That should be wow, the Yasuo actually played well or man, I telegraph that I was going to be throwing my Q at him at that moment, and he windwalled it. So, that's not really uh, grounds for being nerfed. The rest of Yasuo's kit, equally annoying. Lots of mobility, a free shield every few seconds, knockups, all that kind of thing, but again, that doesn't mean Yasuo is, is broken. That just means that he has parts of his kit that people find annoying. Whether or not this grounds for a nerf, I don't think so. I think maybe he could stand to be looked at. He did see a little bit of play in professional play during Worlds, but or in the run-up to Worlds, sorry, I don't think we saw a Yasuo at Worlds. But I don't. I, I would say at this moment that Yasuo is more annoying than anything, and it's a question of learning his counters and learning how to play against one, more than it is the champion itself is broken. Finally, today we're going to be talking about um, disabling champions when they're launched. Now, I know a lot of people, this always comes up every time a champion's being released, and with Camille looking to be released this... Uh, this Wednesday, I figure we may as well open the conversation. So the justification a lot of people give for champions being disabled on launch is that people don't want them play getting played in ranked because if it's someone's first game playing the champion and playing them in ranked, they will most, most often feed their ass off and lose you the game because you played that champion instead of something that you do know how to play. 
the other reason people usually give is that you have, if, especially if you had a PBE account, you have a lot more time practicing the champion or playing against it. Whereas if you have not had that experience, then you're at a, a significant disadvantage. Both of these, I think, are are kind of bogus points because. Sure, you could say disable the champion for a week after launch, but the the first thing this would do is, honestly, it would hurt Riot because people would not play the champion as much. Some people do nothing but play ranked. They don't want to take the time to play the champion in normals, which I think is a disadvantage, but it's their choice. And if they decide to bring the champion into ranked, you have to help them the best you can. The other thing is that you can ban the champion. I don't think that's it's that big of a deal, and we're not at a point at this stage in the game where you can where there are six champions that have to be banned every game. There are a lot of annoying champions. I think Kennen, Vayne, Caitlyn, Jin. These are all good bans, but it's not like you can ban out all of the troublesome champions. So, if you really don't want to see Camille, or if you think she's going to be bullshit overpowered, just ban her. I think that's that's a decent thing to do. And the other thing is, statistically speaking, if you're not planning on playing Camille, the enemy team is more likely to have a Camille than your team is. If you already don't think you you're going you want to if you don't want to play Camille, then statistically speaking, there are only four people on your team that could possibly play her. Meanwhile, the enemy team has five possible people who may play Camille. The odds are that Camille will be on the enemy team, not yours. And if it's their first game on Camille, they get punished. The other thing is, I don't want to punish people who want to play the champion, who have been playing the champion for a long time and have learned them. If I spent the entirety of the release day, if I spent 24 hours doing nothing but play Camille, in norms or in rank, doesn't matter, and I bring her out the day after she was released, with tons of games under my belt ready to go, I think it's I think it would be pretty bogus for me to not be able to play the champion just because people don't think I can play the champion, not because I actually can or can't. So, as a whole, I feel like definitely you should keep the champions enabled. I know it's annoying, but... Ultimately, I think it leads to better gameplay, and I think it's just a better decision for Riot as a whole. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like if you did. Drop a comment down below if you've got any questions, or if you've got any feedback about the video format. I am still looking to improve on everything that I'm doing. Uh, if you enjoy the content, please hit the subscribe button. It does help me in what I do. And as always, you can check out more Grab the Lantern content on my Tumblr, grabthelantern.tumblr.com. Once again, thank you guys so very much for watching, and I will talk to you all later.